Today I'm going to be talking about the Magic Tab in DST. The Magic Tab is one of the tabs that newer players might forget about. However, it contains some of the more powerful items in DST in terms of weapons and tools. The first magical thing that you're going to craft is the pr press press uh, this thing. It is the first magical prototyping station and unlocks the first half of the magic tab. The items it unlocks are Meat Effigy, Pan Flute, Ice Staff, One Man Band, Night Light, Life Giving Amulet, Shield Amulet, Oki Vigil, Moon Dial, and the Shadow Manipulator. The Shadow Manipulator is the second prototyping station and it unlocks Dark Sword, Night Armor, Bat Bat, Belt of Hunger, Nightmare Amulet, Fire Staff, Telelocator Staff, and Telelocator Focus. There are two other craftable items in the magic tab. Abigail's Flower, which is only craftable by Wendy and unlocked from the start, and the Lazy Deserter, which is unlocked from a rare blueprint only obtainable from fishing in the oasis during summer. The requirements to craft the first magic station, the Prest, uh, the Hat Machine, thanks for him, are four live rabbits, four boards, and a top hat. While these ingredients might seem annoying to get, as you can't eat the rabbits and you're seemingly wasting a top hat. You don't actually need any magical items to make it, so you should try and get the hat machine as early on as you can. Before you start crafting magic stuff, digging graves is, an, is not a bad idea because of the magical components that they can contain. However, if you do this, you have to watch out for ghosts, which have a 10% chance of spawning per grave and the looming danger of insanity. The first item you should try and craft from the hat machine is the ice stuff. It's generally quite easy to craft, requiring only a spear and a blue gem. Gems can be obtained from digging graves, earthquakes, killing red or blue hounds, picking tumbleweeds, mining stalagmites, ancient statues and broken clockworks in the caves slash ruins, and from ornate chests in the ruins. The ice staff is an extremely handy tool, it is not a weapon. You can however use it to escape from a lot of dangerous situations. Tree guard appears, bam, ice staff. I'm prepared for round attack, bam, ice staff. Werepigs, bam, ice staff. Bad memes, bam, ice staff. After the ice staff, you're going to want to craft your first amulet. The tilled amulet only costs some gold and a blue gem to craft, but there's not much point in crafting it outside of summer. In summer it's quite useful, but if you're not there yet, you can wait. The life giving amulet is a highly useful amulet. Its first function is that it'll heal you for 5 health, consuming 5 of your hunger and 5% of the amulet's durability if you're missing health. Its second function is that if you haunt it after dying, it'll resurrect you without the max health penalty which makes it much more preferable compared to a Telltale Heart. The Pan Flute is probably the last item worth crafting early game from the Hat Machine. It's quite expensive to build, requiring one Mandrake, five reeds and a rope. The Mandrake is the annoying part, requiring you to find the elusive Mandrake biome. Only one spawns per world and most of the world's Mandrakes are usually found there. If you're lazy, you can also find a Pan Flute next to Glomus statue with the 75% chance to appear. The Pan Flute puts all nearby, nearby mobs to sleep with 10 uses. Once you've gotten sick of all the tier 1 magical items, it's time to build a shadow manipulator. This structure will unlock all of the magic recipes. Once you have it, it's safe to destroy the hat machine. This structure is considerably more expensive to build than the hat machine. The first ingredient you're going to need is 3 living logs. These bad boys can be found by killing tree guards or chopping totally normal trees. The safest and easiest way to get three is to chop down a totally normal tree and then dig up the stump, which gives you three. The second ingredient is a purple gem. Basically, you can explore the ruins to get these, pick tumbleweeds for years, or combine a red and blue gem at a hat machine. The most reliable method is to kill a clockwork bishop with a guaranteed chance to drop one. The third ingredient is seven nightmare fuel. To get this, you'll have to go insane and fight shadow creatures. These guys aren't too hard, just walk next to them, step away, wait for them to attack, and then attack you again. With terror beaks, keep walking away until they attack, then attack them. Having some armor and hand bat will help greatly. The easiest way to get a hand bat is to save up four monster meat. Durians count as monster foods, so they work too. Keep them all to a pig, which will then turn into a were pig. Were pigs drop all of the ingredients for the hand bat except for the twigs. While you're fighting nightmares, you might as well collect more than 7 nightmare fuel. It's quite valuable and a lot of the tier 2 magic and ancient recipes use it. If you're Maxwell, you're probably going to need it more than any other character, so start saving. The first thing you're probably going to use from the Shadow Manipulator is the Dark, I mean, DANK Sword. But you can use the Night Armor if you really want to, but personally, 
I find it not as useful as the Dark Sword, because you only really need the Dark Sword to stay insane. But it is the strongest armor in the game. I don't know, it's up to you. Personally, I use a log suit and a Wigfred helmet or a football helmet if there aren't any Wigfred slaves available. Generally, I play as a Maxwell, so kiting, which is basically dodging enemies' attacks, then attacking them in between attacking animations, it is useful for avoiding damage. Fun factoid, dark swords used to be crafted with just a stick. Maybe the player used their imagination to imagine the sword. Then the devs got rid of that because, well, because it's stupid. Fun factoid number two. A factoid is a fact which is a false or spurious statement. So ignore what I said, that was a fact, and so was this. Next up is a nightmare amulet. If you're not planning on using a dark sword or taking those delicious, delicious raw green mushrooms, then this amulet is the one for you. It costs 6 gold, 4 nightmare fuel, and 2 purple gems. Uh, I can only see one there, whatever. So basically it makes you have the effects of zero sanity without actually having zero sanity. So nightmares will spawn along with the usual insanity effects. Your actual sanity goes down by 3.3 .3 every minute while wearing this. It makes nightmares spawn more than if you were actually insane, and it helps you save on nightmare fuel. Use it for enhanced farming, a wise investment. Conditions apply, see in store for details. The video done Why are you wasting your time on Oh, if you main Wolfgang, the belt of hunger is pretty darn useful. First of all, it makes you need to eat a lot less in Mighty Form, so you can spend less time eating and more time fighting. Wolfgang only ne really needs a football helmet or a weak friend helmet for max protection. His chest lock can be used for the belt of hunger. In winter, or times where you don't have much food, Wolfgang in his wimpy form only requires 30 hunger a day while wearing a belt, which is like one meeple every two days. However, slurpers, which you need to kill to get slurper pellets, which you need to use the crafter thing, don't respawn, so make sure you repair this item with sewing kits. Sewing them restores two thirds of its durability, so you only need to repair it every six days or so. Now the fire staff. The fire staff is more of a weapon than the ice staff, because it actually deals damage. However, if you're not careful, you can burn a whole forest down, and if the mob dies to the fire, all its flammable loot will burn to ash. I never really use this due to the risk of my base or a forest being burnt down. You can use it to light fire pits and endothermic fire pits from a distance if you can't get there fast enough to use logs. The Bat Bat is a bat obtained from killing bats and collecting their bat wings. It absorbs enemy health when you bat them with a bat like a bat. This weapon deals 42.5 damage and leeches 6.8 health and removes 3.4 sanity with each le with each, each leech. Crafting this weapon is a nightmare as you need 5 battalisk wings to craft it and battalisks only have a 10% chance to drop one. Apart from that you need a purple gem and 2 living logs. This weapon is useful as Maxwell because the sanity loss doesn't matter and the health regain is welcome. Bat bats can be found in ornate chests. Finally, we have the Telelocator Staff and the Telelocator Focus. Both of these are extremely expensive to build and maintain. Basically, you can use the staff to teleport yourself to the Focus from any distance away. Sounds cool, right? Well, it is, apart from the fact that it costs three freaking purple gems for each teleport. And it's expensive to build as well. You can't even use it in the caves. However, to quote the famous Wolfgang main, TOSS69, there are no useless items, just non-creative players. If used under the right circumstances, you can use this thing to trap a Varg and farm hounds endlessly. Because Vargs don't destroy walls and summon hounds from outside your view, you can use this to teleport one inside walls. It'll endlessly summon hounds from outside. Build pig and bunny men huts and place two traps if you can. Now you have infinite gems, teeth and monster meat. Fun fact, fact number three. The magic tab icon used to be a pentagram instead of the red skull. Clay changes because, well, who knows? People think it's because of religious reasons, however, the pentagram had one point facing upwards, which is supposed to be good, as opposed to two points facing upwards. So why the change? Who knows? Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.